Have you ever wondered what lurks in the shadows of Nevada's most haunted places? Our journey begins at the infamous Goldfield Hotel, a place where the past refuses to die. Witnesses report apparitions and disembodied voices echoing through its empty halls. Next, we venture to the hauntingly beautiful Rhyolite ghost town, where spirits are said to roam. Its abandoned structures whisper tales of a time long gone, yet not forgotten. Our final stop is the chilling Virginia City, where the old and the otherworldly coexist. From spectral miners to ghostly children, its haunted history is as rich as its past. Join us as we delve deeper into these haunted places, where every corner holds a chilling tale. Are you ready to step into the unknown and uncover the secrets of Nevada's haunted past? Remember, in these places, you're never truly alone. Welcome to the Granite State, New Hampshire, a place where history whispers from every corner. But some stories are more chilling than others. Our journey begins in Portsmouth, a city that's seen centuries pass by. Its haunted reputation is as old as its cobblestone streets. The Portsmouth Harbor Lighthouse, a beacon in the dark, has tales of a ghostly keeper still tending to his duties. Next, we venture to the town of Guilford, home to Kimball Castle. Its eerie silence echoes with stories of past inhabitants. In the heart of Concord lies the New Hampshire State Hospital. Its abandoned halls are said to be haunted by former patients. We now travel to the town of Hollis, where the Blood Cemetery rests. It's named after the Blood family, whose spirits are rumored to linger. Our journey takes us to the University of New Hampshire, Students tell tales of haunted halls and ghostly apparitions. In the town of Henniker, the ocean-born Mary House stands. Legend has it, the ghost of Mary herself still resides within. We now find ourselves in Hillsboro, at the Manahan Phelps McCulloch Photographic Collection Museum. It's said to be haunted by a former owner. In the town of Warner, the Waterloo-covered bridge is a picturesque yet eerie sight. Some claim to have seen a ghostly woman near it. We venture to the town of Wilton, where the Pine Hill Cemetery lies. It's known for the haunting legend of the Blue Lady. In the city of Nashua, the country tavern is a charming yet haunted location. The spirit of a woman named Elizabeth is said to roam here. We now travel to the town of Chesterfield, where the Spofford Lake holds a chilling tale of a ghostly rowboat. In the town of Hampton, the Tuck Museum is a treasure trove of history and hauntings. Ghostly children are said to play here after dark. Our journey takes us to the town of Jackson, where the Eagle Mountain House stands. Its long history is filled with ghostly tales. We now find ourselves in the town of Bethlehem, at the Mount Washington Hotel. Its grandeur is matched only by its haunted reputation. Our exploration of New Hampshire's haunted places ends here. But remember, these stories are just a fraction of what this state holds. Thank you for joining us on this eerie journey. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thrilling explorations. Until next time, keep exploring. Imagine standing in the heart of New Jersey, where the air is thick with mystery and the echoes of the past. Welcome to a journey through the state's most haunted places. Our first stop is the eerie Seabrook Wilson House, also known as the Spy House. Its history is as chilling as the ghostly apparitions reported here. Legend has it, the spirits of children can be heard laughing in the dead of night. But who are they? Let's delve into the past. The spy house served as a tavern during the Revolutionary War. It's said that British soldiers, unaware of their fate, still haunt this place. From the spy house, we travel to the proprietary house. Once a royal governor's mansion, now a hotspot for paranormal activity. Visitors report seeing a woman in white, believed to be the spirit of a heartbroken lady who died here. Her story is a tragic tale of love and loss. Next, we venture to the Southern Mansion. This grand estate is said to be haunted by the last owner, Esther Mucca, who refuses to leave her beloved home. Guests report seeing Esther in her favorite room, the Solarium. She appears content, forever enjoying the mansion she loved in life. Our journey takes us to the Burlington County Prison. Despite closing in 1965, it seems some inmates never left. Visitors report hearing footsteps, seeing shadowy figures, and feeling an eerie presence. 
it's as if the past refuses to be forgotten. We now return to the Seabrook Wilson house. Remember the laughter of the ghostly children? Let's uncover their story. These children were said to be victims of a deadly fever. Their innocent laughter now echoes through the halls, a chilling reminder of the past. Back at the proprietary house, we learn more about the woman in white. She was the governor's daughter, who died of a broken heart when her lover was lost at sea. At the southern mansion, we discover Esther Mecca was a beloved figure in Cape May. Her spirit, it seems, continues to watch over her home. In the Burlington County Prison, we learn of the harsh conditions inmates faced. The echoes of their suffering still linger. These haunted places of New Jersey are more than just ghost stories. They're a journey through history, filled with tales of love, loss, and the enduring human spirit. As we leave these haunted places behind, remember the stories they hold. Each one is a testament to New Jersey's rich and chilling past. Thank you for joining us on this journey. If you enjoyed this exploration of New Jersey's haunted places, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thrilling content. Until next time, keep exploring.